guys and welcome back to my channel. In case you don't know, I am studying in order to be in academia. I guess I'm already in academia since I'm a graduate student, but anyway, I want to be an English professor, so academia interests me greatly because I will be part of that field. Something was brought to my attention where essentially people have been writing BS articles to see if they get accepted by serious peer-reviewed journals. Peer-reviewed journals are journals that are, as the name implies, reviewed by people who can deem whether A, they're publishable, and B, whether it's factual information that's being posited or whether it's just BS. However, it seems that the people at certain peer-reviewed journals aren't very good at spotting <laughs> what's real information and what someone's sending you uh, just a troll, essentially. I found a really interesting opinion piece on the Wall Street Journal um, discussing this. Now, the article is quite long, so I'm just going to take sections so that I can explain it to you without having to read for half an hour. I will link it if you're interested, but let's just get into it. Fake news comes to academia. How three scholars gulled academic journals to publish hoax papers on grievance studies. The existence of a monthly journal focused on feminist geography is a sign of something gone awry in academia. The journal in question, Gender, Place, and Culture, published a paper online in May whose author claimed to have spent a year observing canine sexual misconduct in Portland. The author admits my own anthropocentric frame makes it difficult to judge animal consent. Still, the paper claims dog parks are petri dishes for canine rape culture and issues a call for awareness into the different ways dogs are treated on the basis of their gender and queering behaviors in the chronic and perennial rape emergency dog parks posed to female dogs. The paper was ridiculous enough to pique my interest and arouse my skepticism, which grew in July in a report in Campus Reform by Tony Erickson. Erickson? I don't know. Author Helen Wilson had claimed to have a doctor in feminist studies, but none of the institutions that offer such a degree could confirm that she had graduated from their program. I'm just gonna call her Miss A. Miss A wrote, in August, Gender, Place, and Culture issued an expression of concern, admitting it couldn't verify Miss Wilson's identity, though it kept the paper on its website. All of this prompted me to ask my own questions. My email to Helen Wilson was answered by James Lindsay, a math doctorate and one of the real co-authors of the Dog Park study. Gender, place, and culture had been duped, he admitted. So had half a dozen other prominent journals that accepted fake papers by Mr. Lindsay and his collaborators. Peter Boghossian, an assistant professor at of philosophy at Portland State University and Helen Pluckrose, a London-based scholar of English literature and history and editor of Ariomagazine.com. So I know that this is probably not like extremely upsetting to a lot of you. Um, maybe it is, I don't know. But this was super upsetting to me because I feel like <sighs> it's what I've been saying in a lot of my videos and I don't want to sound redundant, but it's kind of like the whole thing that we discussed with incest, you know? It's people are so inclined on being accepting that we are accepting things that should not be accepted. Just because someone is a certain way, we can't automatically be like, oh, it's okay, be you. No, there are some things that have a stigma because there should be a stigma. The same way with pedophiles, there's a reason there's a stigma. Anyway, I'm not going to start on that rant. So the fact that this study was accepted is mind-boggling. So talking about dog consent, I mean, that in itself should like set off alarms, red flags should pop up, I don't know. I, I can't imagine being on the board of a journal like or one of the peer reviewers and saying, oh yeah, this makes sense. This is totally not a troll because how can we tell dogs consenting anyway? What I'm starting to wonder is where is this acceptance coming from? Is this acceptance coming from the fact that we're scared, that people are scared of being called racist or homophobic or ableist or transphobic. Two thousand years later. But to me, it seems like people are afraid. The fact that this is a political topic is also important. The fact that they're accepting things about rape and about feminism makes them potentially more trendy and caters to more people, which makes me think that they are scared of being called any of those names that I said before. Because if it were some other topic that is kind of unimportant and irrelevant, they probably would be able to tell it's bull or they'd be like, hey, this isn't as like clickable or clickbaity, really. The three academics 
call themselves left-leaning liberals, yet they're dismayed by what they describe as a grievance studies takeover in academia, especially its enroachment into the sciences. I think that certain aspects of knowledge production in the United States have been corrupted, Mr. Bogossian says. Anyone who questions research on identity, privilege, and oppression risks accusations of bigotry. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. If there's the risk of an accusation, some people just get so scared that they throw their principles to the wind and they just publish things that probably shouldn't ever be published, even if it's on a personal blog. Anyway, beginning in August 2017, the trio wrote 20 hoax papers, submitting them to peer-reviewed journals under a variety of pseudonyms, as well as the name of their friend Richard Baldwin, a professor emeritus at Florida's Gulf State College. Mr. Baldwin confirms he gave them permission to use his name. Journals have accepted seven hoax papers, four have been published. Kind of depressing for me to hear this because I ha want to publish in those kinds of journals and it's just like, well not those kinds of journals, but you know, I would like to publish in journals and this makes me lose so much faith in the people who are reading the papers because it's not just one person reading them usually, so I just don't know how this could just go ev over everyone's head. Or there was no questioning, there was no looking into the background of whoever was submitting it, like to see whether they even had the credentials they claimed to have. Like, this is crazy. One of the trio's hoax papers published in April by the journal Fat Studies claimed bodybuilding is a fat exclusionary and proposed a new classification termed fat bodybuilding as a fat inclusive politicized performance. How do you not see that as BS? Maybe because people in academia have been spewing BS and have been getting away with it for longer and they genuinely believe it and it wasn't a hoax, but honestly, come on. Editor Esther Rothblum said the paper had gone through peer review and the author signed a copyright form verifying authorship of the article. This author put a lot of work into this topic, she said. It is an interesting topic looking at weight and bodybuilding, so I'm surprised that of all things, they'd write this as a hoax. As you can imagine, this is a very serious charge. After online publication of the article, Fat Studies retracted the paper, saying the editors and publishers confirmed this is a hoax paper, which was submitted under false pretenses. The funniest thing about all this to me is that there were some things that I studied in my queer theory class. Yes, it was called queer theory. They don't think it's a slur anymore anyway. And some of the things I read in there sound like hoax papers just because they're so out there and BS that I'm like this, I'm like we're not talking about this, right? I just, <laughs> I'm kind of questioning the whole everything I've read at this moment because like how many hoax papers I wonder have been published and nobody just ever came out and talked about it. One of the really interesting parts of this is Affilia, a peer-reviewed journal of women and social work, formally accepted the trio's hoax paper, Our Struggle is My Struggle, Solidarity Feminism as an intersectional reply to neoliberal and choice feminism. The second portion of the paper is a rewrite of a chapter from Mein Kampf. Affilia's editors declined my request for comment. But in a statement issued Thursday, the editors of Affilia said the paper had been evaluated by two reviewers and had undergone two rounds of edits. The article does not espouse racism, anti-Semitism, or any other fascist ideology. The parallels to Mein Kampf were limited exclusively to word choice in the descriptive text. In the author's own words, the original language and intent of Mein Kampf has been significantly changed to make this paper publishable and about feminism. Indeed, the article as a whole espouses social justice and anti-oppression, ideals entirely at odds with fascism. While the editors have recognized the ideas from Mein Kampf, they did not recognize paraphrases shorn of that ideology, the statement said. It added that Affilia was investigating changes to current protocol to improve accountability processes. The system is so broken that you can edit Mein Kampf to make it feminist and no one will notice. I don't know if I want to cry or laugh at that, but honestly, I don't think that what these people are doing is bad because I mean, it is really sneaky, but at the same time, it's just kind of like you're testing whether a system is working and you're exposing that it's not working. Do I feel bad for those journals? Not really, because if you're not even checking the background of whoever is submitting to you to see that they have their doctorate or whatever they're claiming to have, I mean, why would you take someone's word? Like I could write a paper now and saying, oh yeah, Dr. Philip who got their degree from Harvard. Like. Why are you not checking that first before even reading anything and wasting your time? I just don't understand how these things exactly happen because if you just do the proper process, you'd think it wouldn't. It boggles my mind that 
multiple people read these like silly hoax papers and were just like, yeah, this is totally credible. Let's go, let's, let's publish it right now. I don't know. I thought this was really interesting though because it kind of shows you where we are right now in society and where the tensions are because they're accepting these things, like I said, on a basis of escaping for potentially being called bigots or racist or whatever, you know. So it's really interesting because this is about academia, but it's saying so much about how society is working right now in the United States. And it's just kind of funny and sad and honestly bizarre, but I think that these people doing it is hilarious. And I don't know, I don't really think they should face any like consequences with the law because they're not hurting anyone by doing this. I don't know if there are laws in place about it, but I thought this was super interesting. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about this. Uh, let me know your thoughts. This is definitely a weird kind of situation, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and let's get right into the fan art.